one. Here we go. Good afternoon, everybody. It's David Perlmutter from Quantum Listing, and welcome to our Wednesday webinar. We are very, very excited and lucky to have Rod Santamassimo from the Massimo Group uh, with us today. Uh, if you haven't had the opportunity to meet Rod yet or get familiar with him. He is a best-selling author, speaker, and consultant, founder of the Massimo Group, and their mission is to assist independent contractors like us, solopreneurs, small business owners, in transforming their business and ultimately their lives. During his 35-plus year professional career, Rod has been an IT consultant, a CEO of a public telecom firm, CFO of a regional law firm, you're way too nice to be a CFO, uh, and a senior executive of an international commercial real estate firm. He has also started his own brokerage firm, College Lacrosse Recruiting Company, that's a first for us, and is a <laughs> patented inventor. Wow, I want to hear about that too. Through these trials and tribulations, Rod developed the Massimo Methods, uh, these are the same methods that Rod implemented to create a multi-million dollar coaching business as well as his Massimo Group clients, uh, allows his Massimo Group clients to accelerate their own success. And during his free time, and it's hard to believe that he has any free time, he loves spending time with his wife and kids uh, in North Carolina. So thank you again, Rod, uh, for being here with us and giving us your time because I know, uh, um, in addition to having started Quantum Listing, I am a commercial real estate broker, and uh, anything I can learn to improve my practice is always very, very welcome. So I'm going to throw it away over to you now. Well, David, I can't, first of all, I can't thank you enough for allowing me to share some time with you and your audience this week. And certainly, I think I need to take you on the road with me from an introductory standpoint. <laughs> <laughs> I said, who is that guy? <laughs> anyway, hey, you know, before we get started, I would really love to know who we're speaking with today. So if you could just simply in the chat box, let me know, don't, your name will come up, don't worry about that. Let me know what city you're in and how long you've been in the business, the city you're in and how long you've been in the business. And if it's just you, fine. If it's if there are a lot of folks sitting with you, let let David and I know so we can understand the size of the audience. So we got some folks from Detroit, fantastic. Okay, who else is out there in the, in the chat box? Let us know about you. Uh, Miami, fantastic, nine years. Oh, Jersey, okay. First year, so we got someone seventeen years, first year thirty three years, nine years in California. I love these. Thank you. Hey, Judith. Oh, it's good to see you, Judith. Down in Atlanta. Love it. Let's see. Uh, okay. 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 Boston, Mass. Fantastic. One year. So what we're going to do, please use this chat box. <clears throat> Excuse me. Use the chat box for any questions you have. And David, just give me a quick time check. How much time do we have, David, to oh, share? We, we have an hour. Oh, we have an hour. Oh, okay, awesome. I actually have a podcast uh, at four, I believe. So I'll, I'll be off by then if I have a voice left for that podcast. But um, <laughs> so, David, what I hope to do today is share with you some, some principles that we share with our coaching clients that when applied consistently and when applied correctly have exponential results. So, and that's what we want. We want you all to have exponential results in your practice, whether you're like Greg in Orange, Orange, California, doing this for 34 years, or you're someone else in Hussar, New Jersey, doing this for their first year ever, right? <clears throat> Whatever it might be, we want 2020 to be your best year yet. In fact, David, please remind me before I let you all go, I'm going to give you all a resource, access to another resource behind those I give you that you can actually plan 2020 just like our members, our coaching clients plan. Awesome. So with that said, I think it's time to move forward and how to maximize his income. Hey, for those who don't know me, yep, my name is Rod Santo Massimo and I'm the founder and president of the Massimo Group. And that is actually a very recent picture of me. 
yes, I have aged over the years, cheese and crackers. <laughs> but I, I've also found a company just recently called CRE Perform. You can check it out at CREperform.com. We're now providing assessments for individuals. If you want to hire them, promote them, align them with a certain team, we, we've figured out the, the methodology to get the right people in the right seat on the bus. I've also found a company called CRE Boss with some of my coach consultants. We help brokerage firms align themselves, succession planning, brokerage accountability, all that things we need to do. We help firms as well. Yeah, doing this for over 30 years now. I've written a couple of books. I'm mostly excited about my new book, Knowing Isn't Doing. Don't kid yourself, Knowing Isn't Doing. And that will come out in March of 2020. As far as my company, you know, we've coached over 2,600 of your peers over our time. We have 30 coaches now, I think 30 wow. coaches across North America. Certainly they have a lot of experience, centuries of experience. And yeah, this year is actually the most productive year our, our coaching clients have ever had, despite some markets being slower than others, I get that. But this year, our clients always say, you generally out earn their peers. So, uh, you know, if you're not a client of ours, our clients are out earning you. And not, this is not, a, this is not a, a negative at all, it's just a fact mathematically by 7X every year. So our clients on average out earn their peers by 7X every year. Why, how? Well, I'm gonna share that with you. I'm gonna share with you exactly, well not exactly, but the parameters of how we do what we do, what you should be doing as you get set for 2020, and what you should be considering over the next two weeks, which I think is the ideal time to stop working and really reflect on the year and set a plan. I don't think you should wait till January to do this, because the year has started and then you're behind the you're just you're behind already. So take the next two weeks, regardless of the whatever you're celebrating, is a great time to review, reflect, and uh, certainly uh, reposition where you're going. So, uh, and I realize there's a misspelling there. It's Quibine, not Quibine. Uh, Nito Quibine, Q U B E I N, is a thought leader, philosopher, president of High Point University. Amazing individual. You should Google him if you don't know him. But he does tell us, look, we don't we don't earn what we want, and that's just a fact. We don't earn what we want. I mean, I like to make ten million dollars next year. Well, that's not going to happen. It's just not right. But we do earn what we deserve. I think that's the really critical point. I want all of you to understand. It's not negative. But if a deal fell through, you felt I didn't deserve that deal to fall through. I get that. But did you have other deals in your pipeline? Did you do what you needed to do to make sure that your goal, regardless, was achieved? Right? So ultimately, we all earn what we deserve. If you're an employee, for example, which I don't think we have any employees in this phone call, you earn what you deserve because that's the role you accepted and the compensation you agreed to. That's a fact. If you're a commercial real estate broker, mortgage broker, um, whatever you may be, right? Selling, leasing, you're earning what you deserve because you set forth the actions to earn that amount of money. That, that's a fact. I want you all to understand what it is. And there's no doubt to become more valuable, another quote I love, you have to increase your value. Every year you must increase your value. There's a lot of ways to do that. I'll share those with you. But you have to increase your personal value if you become more valuable to your prospects because your competition is, they are, right? Are you are you better, better educated, better skilled, better positioned than 2018? Well, you're gonna be in 2020. These things you really gotta digest and understand. Yep, in the first book I wrote about these eight traits. These eight, these are traits, these are you know habits, these are in some way, sometimes skills in regards to what it takes to be a top producer. These traits haven't really changed as much. One trait is probably more important today than any other. And I'll tell you right now, that's the team trait, the T. Having a team around you to leverage the strengths and or weaknesses or challenges that you have on a personal level, on a national behavior level, is essential. The year of working by yourself, those years working by yourself and just being a cowboy, those are over. They are absolutely over. If you're still that, I got some, uh, some people we need to mute there, Dave, if we can. Yeah. If you're still that, we, um, we, we got to fix that because then unfortunately you're going to be extinct pretty soon. So one thing we look at is your natural behavior. So I want you all to think about these four vectors. By the way, this is a company I just purchased from the late and great, and I mean that, late and great, Ralph Spencer. 
uh, together we worked on this thing called the AVA, and I'm now the, uh, the sole licensee in the commercial real estate space. And this AVA was a way to look at personalities, natural behaviors, to see what works in, in uh, commercial real estate. So, for example, in commercial real estate, assertiveness, and I hope to goodness I could clear this out, uh, assertiveness, now that I'm writing this, <laughs> let me see, make sure I can trash, okay, I can. Assertiveness, we tend to find the top producers tend to be highly assertive. Okay, just think about it, they're more goal-oriented, result-oriented. Understand that. Sociability, believe it or not, we find that most top producers are situationally social. They're not wallflowers, introverts. They're not seeing karaoke, throwing the shirt around their, their heads saying, look at me. They're not those people. They tend to be situationally social. They tend to be low comms. These are tendencies. You got, you got to know this going in. They tend to be low comms and they tend to be lowly as far as lack of structure. They're really independent. They think big picture. They're not really detailed oriented. This profile, why this is important, this profile is what we tend to see of the individual top producers when we study top producers. However, it's really important why this is important. You say, well, I'm not that person. You know, I'm, 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 situ I'm situationally assertive and I'm, I'm really social and I'm, you know, I'm low calm, but I'm more structured, right? And my profile is like this. Here's the point. You're, you are yourself. You've got to leverage your own natural tendencies. If you're highly social, then guess what? You're probably gonna get out there and be easier in networking. You will be. You'll be more comfortable, more confident in a networking scenario. Maybe even giving presentations, talking to people. You'll enjoy that. If you're a low assertive, getting on the phone and doing consistent prospecting may be problematic in that you can do it, but eventually the, the energy it takes will, will take its toll. You can't do it consistently and consistently well. The point of knowing this is, folks, you've, one thing I would suggest is you get ready for 2020. How well do you know yourself? How well do you know yourself and your natural behaviors to fill in certain roles and functions of whatever you're doing? Again, commercial brokerage, mortgage brokerage, whatever it is, property management, I don't know what you're doing, but whatever you're doing, you gotta understand who you are so you can have the energy to continue to do that. And also think about this, you can have the energy to go out and align yourself with others who bring other natural tendencies to you or your team that helps you move forward, that helps you move forward. By the way, it's like any assessment, DISC, uh, uh, Colby, it, everything's a two dimensional, just understand that. So everything has to equal 20. So a top producer will tend to be a nine, six, three, two. That would be a tendency of a top producer. But we work with multi-millionaires who may be a three, seven, six, four. So while you're thinking, while you're thinking you have to be this to be a top producer, I'm telling you, you just have to know yourselves and how to align yourselves and how to align what you do every day. This is the most critical thing. One of the, I'm telling you to get the most out of it. And I don't mind sharing, folks. I'm a five. I'm not, I, I don't mind getting the phone. I love making calls. I'm a seven. I love people. I want people to like me. I think only David's going to get this joke, but you know, the old Sally Field line, you know, they like me. They really like me. So, you know, David, I want to be Sally Fields of real estate. Uh, I am, I'm a high com. It takes a lot to me to just get upset. It just does. Right. I, I, I can read, I can read the situation. I can go from there naturally. And by the way, five and seven, of course, is 12 and seven is 19. So that means automatically I'm a one. I'm thinking big picture all the time. It drives my team crazy because I don't care about the details. I said, guys, we're going to do this. Let's get it done. And goodness, my team is highly structured. They tend to be less calm than me. They tend to be situationally social. And yeah, I got like my sales guys, all my sales guys are a high assertive because I know they need to be that. So point being, point being here, just make sure you know, you know yourself, you know yourself. And let me get out of there, okay? And continue. Oh, I don't know, Dave, I might've messed up now. I got it, oh, there it is, okay. <laughs> there it is, okay, I got scared. 
you got to know this too. You got it. This this works. I I I I always share this. And I will until we stop coaching. This works. It, it's proven to work every year after year. In fact, our top producer, the one guy that I personally coach, who's always always outproduces any of our clients. We have hundreds of clients across the world now, North America. We have some in New Zealand. We have some in Panama. I mean, across the world. This is what we find out to be true. First of all, you need to know what your value proposition is. You got to be able to articulate what it is. And yeah, you can have a different value proposition for every different client you go after. You will understand that. Understand that, and you got to know that because you can have a different campaign for every client you go after. So the value prop you have to get defined. Number two, you have to have a market presence. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but you have to have a market presence to differentiate yourself. And with that presence, then you can leverage your prospect and campaign. Now, P plus P plus P obviously equals 3P, but in here it says P cubed. So what we found out is this. When you do these three things and do them consistently well, you get more pitches, presentations, and exponentially more production, more money, more commissions, more fees. This is true. Mathematically, okay, David, maybe not so much, right? <laughs> but this is true. Year after year, we look at all our clients. Again, we track all their numbers. And we see those that do these things, certain presence initiatives, certain prospecting initiatives, we look at the value proposition, they out earn exponentially those that don't. So think about how that can apply to you going to 2020. Now, where are you going to start? You're going to start by setting goals, right? And by the way, you, and by the way, I'll share this right now. When you go to Massimo-group.com, Massimo, don't go now, do not go now, just write this down. When you go to Massimo, M-A-S-S-I-M-O-group.com, we're gonna give you a sheet where you can start learning how to craft and review and get your goals. It's gonna be there, free download, go get it. But what are your goals, right? Now, if you tell me you wanna make a million dollars, $10 million, $100,000, $40,000, whatever it might be, I wanna know why. I really wanna know why, because setting goals is great, right? Yeah, I'm hoping one day this Massimo Group becomes a $10 million company. We're on our way, we're not there yet, but why? Well, why? Because that means I have impacted thousands of people across the globe. I shared our methods with them. Somehow I've impacted their lives and improved their lives. At the same time, yes, I've improved my children's lives, my wife's life, and yes, my personal life. And this means I also got to go on, David, if you like this one, <laughs> I've also got to go on more Masters Old Man Lacrosse tournaments and not worry about <laughs> things, right? Because that's my why. That's my why. I'm challenging all of you to, to really figure out your why. Getting financial goals is fine, but if you don't know why you're doing it, truly why, if you're not going to reach it. You're just not, it's not, the drive is not, tends to be there. And if it's all you do is work your butt off and get that number and you don't have a social life or a life beyond the office, really? Okay, so figure out why, why. Keep score, absolutely 100% keep score. Now, I'm going to share with you, this is an actual scorecard that we use, and we don't have to track all these metrics, but we do track several metrics, anywhere from five to seven. This client, this is an actual client scorecard I just got in last week, who shared it with me. He was, no names on there, but if we look at this, why is keeping score so important? So when we keep score, uh, let me see if I could do this. Okay, when we keep score, I'm looking at P factor, prospecting, Presence, right? Prospecting and presence equals production. Everything I just shared with you is how we look at score. So yeah, do we look at calls? Sure, we check see what calls they're making, uh, how many meetings they're having, how many letters they're sending, how many referrals they're getting, inactive client calls. We'll go into that a little bit. We're looking, at, that's why I really, when I look at calls, I, I look at one, personally, I look at one, two, three, four, five key metrics in prospecting. If you're making the calls, having the conversations, getting the meetings, asking for referrals, and having inactive client calls, we're in a good cadence. And we do that because we're in a really good cadence. If we have face-to-face -face meetings, small group meetings, physical, send out physical pieces and digital pieces, that tells me we're in a good, again, a good cadence. So I'm just sharing, this is the Massimo scorecard. So you, you all can do this on your own right now. You can create your own Excel sheet, create a scorecard, say, yep, I'm gonna track these metrics. Here's where I'm going. But here's what we found out, right? This gentleman made over 4, 000, almost 4,000 calls this year, and his income went from 300,000 to, this is actually a dated scorecard. He'll make seven figures this year. He will, he will. 
So if you do the math, and we've talked about this, this is what the numbers look like. It just is, this is what the numbers look like. So what, the, what do your numbers look like? What are your numbers? And we found this out to be true too, by the way. Those members, we call them members. Now understand this. This is how you treat your clients, right? Um, someone shares with me a long time, I love this. If you have a customer, you're a clerk, right? A clerk has customers. If they're clients, you are an advisor or a consultant. You all, by the way, are in that bucket. You are. If you have members, they're part of a community organization, right? Then you need a concierge. You need a concierge. And we have a, we actually have a director of member success that helps our members be successful beyond our coaches. So just think about that bucket and positioning and how you are. You are advisors, you are consultants. Get the word broker out of your head. I love that you're realtors or brokers. I get that. But think about what you really are. But this is what we found out. Those clients that, those clients that, um, let me get this out of the way. No, I don't want to quit. Uh, I got to get out of this. Okay, those clients that track their, their um, numbers, this is so true. This is amazing. Those clients that track their numbers, exponentially more money, exponentially than those that don't. Why? Number one, now the coach can help them when they go awry, knowing what they're doing to assist them in making adjustments in their path and the journey towards their goal. Without knowing the numbers, can't do that. Just can't. Your gut cannot tell you, I'm having a good year, I'm having a bad year. What the heck does that mean? What does it mean? It's undefined. According to your, your metrics, your, you think you're having a, a great time, right? So what does that mean? So just understand that going forward from what that means. Now, pipeline wise, you also understand your pipeline. So go back to your pipeline and we believe that really your pipeline can be easily broken down into certain statuses, right? From a prospect to a close, that, that makes sense. And, and within there, you should have a probability of, of success. Without a doubt, there should be a probability of success with every every understanding of what they are. So in this example, right? So when you first start out, hey man, I'm starting out, I'm excited, I got someone, please qualify them. Qualify, qualify, qualify. Because once you qualify, you really, really help yourself out as we go down the road. This is what is not true. Commercial real estate is not this. It is not a lineal equation. It is not as you go down your pipeline from left to right, the probability increases. That is not our world. It just simply isn't. So think about that. Number one, got to qualify. Now, number two, you're really excited. For some reason, you're early on in the process. Let me clear that out. You're early on in the process. And for some reason, you said, you know what? I have a high probability of closing. Big mistake, huge mistake. Either your expectations are unrealistic or you think I got this strong relationship, they'll never go anywhere else, right? You're assuming too much. You're not putting forth your best presentation, right? That's a problem. So you better verify, you better verify. Absolutely, you wanna verify when you get there. Now, number three, it's red for a reason. We call that hell, and that's why. You're all the way down the road. You're now negotiating, you're under contract. There's no way it's gonna close. Ugh, you got yourself there. You got yourself there. No one else but you allowed yourself to get there. And if that's the case, how you can get yourself out, right? Again, get the client back to reality. Market shifted since we took the listing, since we did this, right? Let's get where we are or fire the client. Fire the client, which by the way, I will tell you is one of the most joyful things you can do when you get to do it. Um, emotional energy is just out there. Now, I'm not suggesting you fire clients that can give you 10 more deals. That's not the point here, right? But there are clients that the one-time opportunities are just draining you emotionally, get rid of. And certainly, as you move forward, we want you to make sure you magnify as you're getting a deal close to close to closing, right? It doesn't close to ask for a referral. It doesn't close to ask for a testimonial. It doesn't. Most of you think it does. It doesn't. But make sure you give it to full focus, magnify your focus, get that absolutely to close. And that's, that's, that's just where you want to go. So get that to close and everything happens from there.
So think about that as well. Okay, so let's talk about your presence. I love this book. It's an oldie but goodie by Keith Ferrazzi, Never Eat Alone. Uh, invisibility is a fate worse than failure. Yep, folks, it is. It's a fate worse than failure. You cannot succeed if you're invisible. So well, how do you get visible? Number one, personal. Get out there, get known. Remember that sociability, natural tendency. Are you comfortable getting known, shaking hands, giving man hugs, whatever you're doing out there? This is not a prospecting initiative. Think back to the P factor. This is a presence initiative. This is a marketing effort, not a sales effort. You got to know the difference. So get out there, get known. Number two, send out physical pieces. Yep, they work. Physical pieces absolutely work, but no one does them or does them consistently. That's a problem. And of course, everyone probably relies on the last but not least, and that's the digital, the digital presence issue. Tweets, blogs, vlogs, all great, all definitely help, but you gotta do all three. We found that if you do two or three, yeah, it has an impact. Nothing close to when you do all three, do all three. My challenge to you is in 2020, get out there and go on two, just two personal meetings a week. If you go on four or five or six personal meetings a week, this is what it means. You're not prospecting, you're not selling. You're just trying to become famous and hope that works out for you. You know, there are brokers who wanna be famous. I get that and that's great if that's what you want. Most of those brokers though are not wealthy. So fame or wealth, you know, it's good to have both. I personally prefer wealth, but you know, fame helps. Getting to know your pitch presentation. At the Massimo Group, because of our width of clients, we have clients, you know, we have clients in every major company. We have clients in most of the regional firms and we have a lot of independent clients, there's no doubt about it. And so I see every single pitch book out there in the market. I personally see it. And by the way, I'm not proud of that. In fact, that tells me on how we're using my time. But what I'm telling you is they're all the same. They're all the freaking same. And it's terrible. It's all about me, me, me. Look how big I am. Look at my team. Look at this. Look at this. It's all about me. It's never about your prospect. In 2020, how can you change the spectrum, the perspective to be about the prospect? One way you do that is understand the prospect, their key decision makers, the key issues they're dealing with, and, and are be able to articulate that back to your prospect. You're gonna meet with a law firm next week. I would Google, give me the top 10 challenges of law firms today and figure out what those are and ask them about those. Engineer you're meeting with or a baker or whoever, right? Greatest five challenges of, of financing your apartments in, in, in 2019. It's out there in Google. GTS, Google that stuff, it's there. So use Google as a new parameter and, and, and more importantly, a, a resource to start crafting a message that's about the client and not about you. You wanna differentiate yourself in a pitch next time with you and your, your accomplishments, is that important? Heck yeah, of course it is. Like, I know it's not your first rodeo, as Ralph used to say, but that goes at the end. In the beginning, it's all about, all about the client. Now, when people come to me and they say, Rod, what's the one thing I can do to make more money? Which of course we laugh at uh, because it's not one thing that can make you make more money. There is no silver bullet in success, particularly in commercial real estate. But I'll say this, there is, there is silver buckshot. And what I mean by that is for those who have a shot, a shotgun, all right, it sprays out a little, a bunch of little pellets in a wide range. So if you consistently do a lot of little things, you know, consistently do a lot of little things, you're gonna make a lot of money. It's just a fact. You will, you will. We've proven it. It will. So can you control time? No, but can you control your utilization of your activities and what you do? Absolutely. So time management, not so much. Time utilization, yeah. That's where the decisions come in. So when it comes to time, you gotta know how much you're worth. Every, every single, you all need to know how much you're worth, right? It's so important. I know you're in a commission only business, most of you, but if you don't know your hourly rate, 
you cannot move forward in deciding how to spend your time. So do I take on clients that don't create for me my hourly worth? Heck no, I never would. Do I do things that aren't my hourly worth? For example, I love, I know I'm kind of a geekish when I say this, I love Excel pivot tables. I think they're one of the greatest creations on earth. I just do. It's amazing what you can get if you understand how they work. Heck, I can do it at my hourly rate, or I can go to someone in Mexico on, uh, on a, any of the outsourced portals and say, hey, this is what I need, please to, uh, uh, break it down for me. And they'll do it for about $5 an hour. Yeah, I think I'm going to Mexico. Yeah. And I think they're gonna do an okay job, right? So you gotta know your hourly rate. And then from that, of course, I'm sorry, we have this approach we call I paid, identify, prioritize, allocate, implement, delegate. It's a whole process with all certain rules, but this is the theme of I paid. Because you're in the commercial real estate space, what happens is you're gonna to work today, you're gonna to do something today, and you're gonna ask yourself, was I paid today? And the answer is probably gonna be no, because you're not getting paid the day you meet with a client, you're not getting paid the day you go on a tour, you're not getting paid the day you review a lease, you're not getting paid that day. You're not getting paid for months in many cases, because that deal's not gonna close for months. So that, that, that correlation to effort and, and result, right, is really a long road. And it's a hard connection to make mentally for you. It is. So what happens is when you will finally close a deal, you doubt, I doubt highly you're celebrating. In fact, you're probably more relieved, right? You are probably more relieved than joyous. And you should be joyous when you close a deal, not relieved. So what we said is, look, if you follow these five steps, and we there's rules to this, so don't, but if you're, take some of down. If I can do these five things every day, right? The acronym I paid, then guess what? You'll be paid that day. That day you'll know, hey, I got paid today. What that means, of course, is that you're making an accelerated move towards the actual monetary reward. But every day you can say you got paid. That's what that's about. And yeah, this this one's simple, simple. I don't agree with this, this exact, what I'm showing here, but you should allocate time in your calendar. In fact, when people say, hey, how do I make more money? I say, tell me about, tell me about your calendar. Well, what do you mean? Tell me what you allocated, what buckets, what days, what hours, You know, how much white space do you have between doing certain things? So if, if you're gonna say, how can I make more money? The first thing I'd ask you is, let me see your calendar. And that's gonna tell me if you're, if you're prepared for a money-making week, or you're gonna reactionary to the whirlwind that is commercial real estate. So time allocation is absolutely key. Uh, another Nito Cobain quote, <clears throat> and I know this is a little deep, so I'll be, slow, I'll be slower when I say it. When I read it first, I said, what does that mean? So to do is transactional. Think about that. To do is transactional. To stop doing, your stop doing list leads to you to what you call, called to be. So that means I must be before I can do. You need to stop doing the things that are purely based on transactions and do the things that can get you where you want to be. You must be something before you can do, right? So if you wanna be a top producer, what do top producers do? How do they spend their time? What don't they do? Get those off your list. And we all consume with to-do lists I'm telling you, there's nothing more powerful than not to do list. A not to do list can really take your perspective and turn it around to how you should spend your time. And I believe in this wholeheartedly. In fact, this is one of the quotes I, I always throw out there is look, just because you can do something faster and better, it won't make you wealthier. Some of us, me particularly, have a hard time initially letting go, right? But I realized, you know what? I can send it out to Mexico or China, not China, or Philippines or, or India, and they can do a pretty good job. Is it better than mine? No, but is it work? Yeah. Did I spend a fraction of my time and worth? Absolutely. Why not do it? Why not do it? So remember this, you can outsource anything, and I mean anything today. You can outsource anything today that's significantly less than your own worth. And that outsource may be to a part-time employee or full-time employee or an independent contractor or a vendor or a virtual assistant. It doesn't really matter. The key is you must outsource. You must look at next 2020 and say, really, 
where do I have the greatest impact? And if you download that, that free workbook at massimo-group.com, it's going to help you identify these. But where are you going to allocate your time in 2020 that has the greatest impact, that has the greatest impact of overall on your bottom line, on your bottom line? So before I leave you with, because I give you a lot to do and knowing isn't doing, <laughs> right? Knowing isn't doing. I just want to share with you uh, the four quick things of the Massimo Group, what we have to offer and give you an opportunity to visit us if you wish. So if I may, David, this will take Please. less than uh, one minute. Um, at the Massimo Group, we have four programs today. We have our membership. This gives you access to a lot of our tools, uh, a lot of our online content. Uh, historical library of webinars and so forth. The Mosmo membership is a monthly fee, month to month. Uh, by the way, that fee goes up significantly on January 1st. So if, you're, if you wanna check that out, check it out this week or next. New to business, that's now, this has just changed. This is now a 12 week program because I just realized there's so much more we can do. And if you're one year in the business or less, this is a program for you. 12 week program, one year or less, that's a program for you, check it out. If you're mid-career, I just changed this as well. I'm, re I'm redesigning all our programs. This is now a 12-week program. I wanna accelerate your learning here. This is a 12-week program in a group coaching format. People around the country, and actually around the world with the folks we're getting, talk about our methodologies. This, and this is the one, new to business as well, that we actually share our coaching content and our coaching methodologies in group formats. So again, that's something you should check out. If you're mid-career and you're thinking, you know what, maybe you're stuck, maybe you wanna get more, maybe you wanna grow, that's a place for you as well. And last but not least is, is our, uh, our elite one-on-one -on -one coaching program. If you wanna truly become a top producer and transform your business and build sustainable, consistent, growing uh, income and more margin in your life, our one-on-one -on -one coaching program is the one I would suggest, and this is not, a, I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I don't sell our programs or I have salespeople do that. I just share information. So I'll share with you this and I do this every two years and this is now the second anniversary. So I mean, I'm doing it in January. All our fees go up significantly. In fact, 20% they're going up in 2020 because I haven't raised them in two years and demand is still outpacing the supply of what we have to offer. So. If you're interested, check it out at mosmo-group.com and then schedule an appointment with one of our consultants and see if you wanna engage before the uh, end of the year and you can save a heck of a lot of money and more importantly, grow your business, grow your business. So that is, that are the key ways for each of you to grow your business in 2020. We got some time left, so I'm, I've, ample time i got 20 minutes david i'll take any questions on anything regarding commercial real estate brokerage practice if anyone has any questions how do they ask david all right well they can uh ask in the chat box or they can feel free to unmute themselves and uh talk to us uh i have a question while we're waiting for our audience and uh, we do generally have a very shy audience so uh i will uh, get the ball rolling here so it sounds like 2019 was an amazing year for you in the Mosmo group. Uh, what are you planning for 2020? How are you gonna make it even better? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Well, better is uh, better is a, 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 a kind of weird term, better. How am I gonna better? I, I want, in two, first of all, the biggest thing we're doing in 2020 for me is that we are launching my new book, Knowing Isn't Doing in March. We're actually gonna give a lot of content away in the book, yeah, you gotta buy the book, I get that. But, because I do believe, I do believe knowing isn't doing. People say, yeah, I know that, are you doing it? Well, no, well, I'm gonna give you a, a plan to actually do it. So that book, and that book go beyond commercial real estate, and that's what that, we have, you know, that's that's where all my effort is right now. All my effort is in, in getting that book to a successful launch in March. And then by September 1st, the big goal for us is that we're gonna create a camp, a platform, a coaching platform for non-commercial real estate uh, folks. We're getting a lot of inquiries from maybe insurance, medical sales, engineers, architects, and the like, saying, hey, how can you help me? Right now I can't, but by the fourth quarter, I will be able to. So those are my goals. Uh, David, how about you, David? What are your goals in 2020? 
great question. Uh, so I have two different businesses. Uh, one is my commercial real estate business, Perlmutter Properties, and the second uh, being Quantum Listing, which is uh, our commercial real estate listing service. So for Perlmutter Properties, uh, where I'm actually moving offices in 2020. And uh, because I'm dividing my time between the two businesses, uh, I really need to be working as smart as possible and as organized as possible. And I love that uh, where you showed your calendar because uh, I, you know, in the past I've been much more seat of the pants and at this point I don't have the luxury of time to do things seat of the pants. So I'm really, I've been making a much stronger effort uh, to get myself organized so that I can really maximize uh, what I'm doing every single day because otherwise it's just too easy to get lost in the weeds uh, with that. So. You know, I'm boxing out some time in the morning to do my canvassing. Uh, I was doing the math on my head when I, you were showing us your scorecard. And if, you know, somebody looked at it and said, oh, my God, 4,000, uh, you know, calls a, uh, a year. How the hell am I ever going to do that? Well, if you think about it, you're working probably 200 days a year. So it's 20 calls a day. That's really not that difficult. So no. uh, it's... it's <laughs> Hey, it's, a, it's, it's, it's achievable. It's not, it, you know, it, it takes timing, it takes planning, it takes effort. And there's about 5,000 birds outside my window now. I'm sorry, it looks like Alfred Hitchcock out here. Um, so, sorry about the distraction there. But um, so, you know, it really is a very doable and it makes a big difference. And having a CRM that you love is uh, really important because. Uh, if you don't like it, you're not going to use it, and there's no way to stay on on target with uh, reaching those goals unless you have, you know, some reliable systems in place. So, uh, Perlmutter Properties. One thing that I uh, in 2019 we were very successful in uh, getting a lot of our listings uh, leased or sold. And I will confess that I was somewhat negligent in developing new business. So uh, I think my first priority in 2020 is going to, uh, you know, get some new listings and some uh, some new customers uh, so that I uh, can keep doing the brokerage. Because so I, you know, I love doing the brokerage business. Uh, it's a great way to, uh, you know, build relationships with people and to make money and. Uh, you know, well, David, uh, if I can, Dave, I can. Yeah. Uh, let me stop you there because like, we got some yeah. folks leaving now. We got only a few minutes. Sure. So I'm going to challenge everyone this call right now because I, I look, um, Amy and Andre and Evan and Greg and John and Judith and Julia and Mike, Sierra and Terry. I'm gathering because you have no questions that you had a fantastic year in 2019 and you're set up for even better year in 2020 that you have no challenges and no issues and no concerns. You are set for the year. Because that's what needs to tell me if you have no questions. Because when you have, look, and it's not about me, but I talk to thousands of brokers and coach thousands of brokers on making maximum their, maximum their income, efficiency time. Share with us one challenge you have. Just write down, hey, look, maybe oh, I don't prospect consistently or you know, I have a hard time with social media or getting people on the phone or I don't want to say on this. There's got to be something that someone's going to share that's going to apply to everyone, I can guarantee you, that you can put in the chat box that says, this is something I'm struggling, currently struggling with. So if you want to share in the chat box anything you're currently struggling with, we'd love to assist you in the few minutes we have left. And if not, you know, I get it. Being shy is good, but when you have the opportunity to, to improve yourself, I always say, hey, time to improve yourself. Uh, we got one from Julia. Julia says... Her challenge is getting people to get back to her and follow through. Okay, so Julia, if you can just expand on that, I'm gonna talk a little bit, but if you can expand on that, what do you mean by that? If you're meaning, look, I call people consistently and they don't get back to me, then there's, there's two issues here, right? One is that maybe what you're leaving on the phone 
isn't valuable enough for me to return your call, that very well could be it, that your value proposition, remember the P factor, right? And what you're articulating on that phone call may not be enough for me to return your call. And you, you've, got, you've got to question that, right? Yeah. Then, okay, Julia, you there? Yeah, yeah, I am. <laughs> so, so Julia, great, thank you. Tell yeah. me what you mean by that, expand on that. Yeah. Yeah, so I tried to be a little vague just because um, I know most people on the call are um, real estate brokers and whatnot, but I'm with um, David here with Quantum Listing, so my role is a little different, but just like the brokers, you know, I'm trying to, uh, in a way, close on deals uh, in the sense that trying to get, you know, our users to become uh, premium members and actually pay for our uh, products. So I would say, like, uh, I generally get pretty good um response from people initially when you know when they join but then sometimes it can be hard um hearing when i when i said like hearing back from them like you know people might say oh i'm really interested this sounds great but then they never um end up you know continuing on and um you know do my best to call like they've said as many people as possible a day but sometimes there's limitations and uh just trying to you know get people to uh, I think I think initially people are really excited about things, and then they kind of like forget, um, or they just kind of other things preoccupy their mind. So, okay, so I think a couple couple of responses here. And by the way, it doesn't matter if you're doing your your, your prospecting for for uh, selling quantum listing, or you're prospecting to lease a building, or to represent a tenant, or sell. It doesn't matter. It's all the same, right? So number one, what's the campaign? It's because campaigns aren't just calls. They aren't campaigns are emails physical mailings, your presence socially, to let them know there's a campaign around this effort to get you to talk to me. There's gotta be a campaign. So when, when I, I would, we can't do it right here, we break down the campaign, the pieces in that campaign. Yeah. Number two, in that campaign, really important, in that campaign is the focus, we talked about this in the presentation, on the, on the features of quantum listing or of the features of my representation services or our coaching services, whatever it might be, right? Or is the focus on the benefits that others, social proof, community proof, right? Others are receiving by implementing this, right? Mm -hmm. yep. So that's what, that's what I had to hear the value prop. So I, I don't need to sell quantum listing right now, but give me the three, think about this. If you can articulate the three main reasons, benefits that I would get for being a client of yours. So that's one thing. Number two, what I found really works really well is after the chase, I hate that word, but that's what it is. Yeah. After the chase and you all, all the folks out there, you, you do the chase, right? Following up, following, no response, no response, no response, chase, chase, chase. It's a terrible place to be. First of all, I don't allow the chase. I do not allow a chase. And I make that clear in my first call. And my, my salesman, they may chase a little bit, but I try to coach them not to do that. So in that first call, I set expectations, right? After we share information, have a discovery meeting, a discovery phone call, where there's gonna be some kind of follow-up, I get a commitment what that would be. So I say, look, look, I'm glad we had this chance to talk. I'm gonna send you the information that you have requested, obviously, maybe a blow off, I need to figure that out. Um, so let's do this. Let's agree that next Tuesday at three o'clock, we're going to have a phone call and one of three things are going to happen. Number one, you're going to say, yes, I want to do this. That'd be great. Number two, you're going to say, no, I have no interest. And here's why I don't have an interest. Or number three, you know what? Now that we're talking again, I do have some questions I want to discuss with you. So I'll make, I'll make them give me that commitment. Now, yeah. if they give me that commitment, guess what? It's a qualified lead. Because now they come in to, yeah, they're going to they're gonna review and give me one of three responses. And I'll know if I got a client or I don't really quickly and I won't chase. That, that'd be great. Also, if they say, no, I can't commit to that, just send me information, they're not qualified. They're not interested. Or, yeah. or I did not articulate the value to them where they would say yes. So it could mm -hmm. be me as well, right? Okay. It could definitely be me. So we got, yeah. we got look at that. And then finally... Once I chase, and if you all are into the chasing mode and you're chasing and chasing and chasing, what we found works, I got this out of the book, Hot Prospects by Bill Good. It was, this is not a Massimo methodology. This is something I read. Boy, I hope you are all voracious readers because you need to be, but something I read and it said this, look, send a send an email. Now the email they had me send, I had to change because it didn't work, but the theory worked. 
sent an email and I just said, hey, sorry, we did not connect, right? That was it. And I'm gonna give them reasons of just, look, I've been trying to reach you this many calls, this many dates, here's why yeah. I called. And I assume you're not interested in these three main benefits of us uh, working together. That's a good you know, idea. Julie, okay. what I found out is I'm getting about a third, do, do the math now, about a third of those people call me back. Now they, right. may, call, they may call and say, Rod, never call me again. Uh -huh. They may call and say, Rod, I'm not interested, but a third of those do the They're math, back right? Say, you know what? I want to talk to you. Yeah. So, so don't do the chase, get a commitment up front. But if you're not articulating your value prop, you're really in trouble. Okay. Yep. Okay. Looks like um, we got another one. Yep. Yeah, I see that. So prospecting, I fall behind and let other things get in the way. Judith, it's very simple. You're allowing the whirlwind to take over in your day. And for everyone that remains on this call, let me share with you something that's going to be true until the day you quit commercial real estate or until the day you die. And this is this is just a fact, and there's no way you can tell me I'm wrong. And it's this, Judith, no client, not a single client, will ever make you more money than you will for yourself. Not a single client will ever make you more money for you than you. So what I mean by that is, Judith, you, you, you are your most important client. There is no doubt about it. You are. You can't argue that. Because you're going to make more money in a, in a total than one client can ever make for you. So what does that mean? When you tell yourself you're going to make prospecting calls, you are in a meeting. You're in a meeting with your most important client. That's yourself. And so when another client calls or someone interrupts or something happens, you got to tell them, look, I'm sorry. I'm in a meeting with a client. Because I can tell you right now, if in fact you were in a meeting with one of your clients and someone else tried to interrupt you, you'd say, hey, dude, I'm in a meeting with a client. I cannot talk to you. So if you take that same approach to yourself and just give yourself permission to really focus for the hour or two hours, you will never fall behind again. You won't. But you got to give yourself permission and you got to realize that no client is more important than you. That's fantastic. Okay. Anything else, guys? That's great. So, all right. So, let's take care of a few things before we say goodbye. First of all, thank you so much, Rod, for your time today, uh, and you know, really inspiring us to uh, get ourselves together for making 2020 our best year yet. So, thank you. Uh, I want to thank uh, our friends at the News Funnel for sponsoring. Uh, this webinar as well as uh, our other webinars. Uh, thank you. I know Sierra from the News Funnel is with us today. So Sierra, hopefully uh, you got some uh, good tips from Rod too on how to make your your best yet because uh, this is not just about commercial real estate. It's really about whatever it is that we're doing. Uh, I want to thank Julia and Andres from my team for helping uh, put this together today. And of course, I want to thank uh, all of you folks who were kind enough to give us your time uh, today, because you know we know that uh, our time is our stock in trade. So, Rod, if I want to get uh, knowing is not doing, can I pre-order it now on Amazon, or do I have to uh, wait a little bit longer? Yeah, wait a little longer. You can't, you can't do, you can't do a pre-launch this early. So uh, we'll have, we'll get the word out in January and probably a February pre-launch. I appreciate that request, February pre-launch. But um, that's gonna be out. We're excited about that. And uh, David, I'm assuming this is a recording, and you're gonna get this out on your social media. And if you want to share that with me, we'll definitely get this out on our social channels as well. Absolutely, and we will, uh, you know, have links on our website to uh, the links that you mentioned during the performance, uh, the, it was a, a brilliant performance, but during our, your webinar uh, today. And, uh, you know, it's terrific. Uh, if you know, having Rod, uh, you know, talk with us is, is fantastic. If you ever get the opportunity at uh, any of the real estate conferences or real estate tech conferences that you go to to see him live, uh, you definitely want to avail yourself of that. Uh, he's, if it's possible, even more dynamic uh, live and, and in person. So uh, uh, thank you again for this uh, incredible presentation today. 
Well, David, I, again, thank you so much for the opportunity to work with you and your team and your, your audience and wishing you a very um, happy holiday season and certainly a very prosperous new year for everyone. Thank you so much. Take care now. Thank you.